And given the fact that both of these two have two points, whoever wins out of Higgins or Selby here will be looking very good indeed to make those semi-final playoffs tomorrow night. Always looking good and sounding good, Dominic Dale. Thank you, Phil. Yes, looking forward to this match. Two great players. Eight world titles between them. Four apiece. As you say, two master tacticians. Always look forward to a match between these two. Oh, hang on, this is close. I don't think it's in, is it? Oh, it is. It's dropped in, would you believe it? What a fluke that is at the start of this first frame from Mark Selby. I don't know what... Well, they're sharing a joke there somewhere. Both of them. <laughs> oh, I wonder who said what. That won't be easy, I can promise you, with all this larity. I knew he'd miss it. He was smiling, you know, as he played that black. can tell you on table two, it is 2-2. Two -two. Rob Milkins missed a yellow he should have potted. And Walden tidied up. Action on the cue ball, I feel. I don't think he's on one. Two reds that John Higgins was hoping to be on to the left of the pink. I don't think are possible now. When Higgins has played this one, I'm going to make a bold statement and see if you agree, Dom. Let's see this one first, though. <laughs> Nicely done. When it comes to defining statistical probability, I would say that John Higgins, when he beats... Mark Selby on the way to winning the 2021 Players' Championship. He won 6-0 in the quarterfinals. When it comes to defying statistical probability, I would say of all the snooker matches that have ever been played, that's one of the most remarkable, if not the most remarkable. And I'll tell you why. Best of 11, of course. Selby scored seven points in that match. He was outscored 5-4-6 to seven. How can you restrict Mark Selby to seven points in a best of 11? Oh, without the aid of chloroform, I'm not entirely sure, but it doesn't matter who you are. If you begin well in any match, if you can win let's say two or three frames in succession with big breaks, it puts a lot of pressure on the opponent. And if you can continue that good form, you can force your opponent to make a lot of mistakes. That's the only suggestion I can come up with because that's the sort of thing that does happen. 
and two great players play each other. This is something else we see quite commonly these days. John Higgins made no attempt to leave himself straight on this red. Purposely left himself an angle, so in potting it, he can bring other reds into play. If he plays it with too much pace, he'll need to be careful that pink doesn't go in the right centre. Well, that's gone all wrong. I hate to say, over the last season and a half, another thing we're seeing a lot more regularly is Higgins missing balls like that when you don't expect it. Of course, could all turn around, he could start to be watertight again, but this season, and certainly in the second half of last, he was driving himself to distraction with the mistakes he was making. Well, I have a, an explanation in John's technique to make here is that he seems to be placing his bridge hand much closer to the cue ball than I've seen him of late. Now, whenever you do that, it has to be the case that the cue is raised a little because your bridge hand's much closer to the cue ball. You're going to be striking down on the cue ball a lot more than you would do if your bridge hand was, say, a foot away from the cue ball as Mark Selby's bridge hand is here. Whether that's causing John problems and striking down on the cue ball to play some unwanted cue, um, side on the cue ball and thereby missing pots because of it, I don't know, but it does look a little hunched up at times for me. We watched his play here today. And Dominic, as you well know, with all aspects of the game, technique and indeed equipment, Higgins has never been averse to experimentation. He'll always try and tinker with things. Yes, about several years ago, he experimented with all kinds of different cues, and he seemed very settled for the last five or six years with one, but he has changed again a couple of times in the last few months. He's using currently a Ton Praram cue, a Thailand maker. There are lots of great cue makers in Thailand these days. John seems to have found a cue that he likes, but that's a mistake, and he seems to have made a couple of very small technical changes that could be causing him the odd issue. Selby has a chance here to cannon the two reds together that are near the pink spot. That should guarantee him position on another red. Bought the wrong red first. And if you catch that near jaw, far more often than not, they are not going to go in, especially if you catch as goodly a portion of the jaw as Selby did there. See there how close John Higgins' bridge hand was to the cue ball. For me, it's just a little too close. Just looks a little hunched up. Different here because his bridge hand has to be placed on the cushion rail, so it's a long way away on this particular occasion. But you can see how flat John's cue is there to the table because of the length and the distance of the bridge hand from the cue ball.
can see here, striking right down on it. Mind you, he is hampered by the pink. How about this? He's 54th on the one season ranking points list, John Higgins. Totally unaccustomed territory. And because of that, he's going to be a very notable absentee from the forthcoming World Grand Prix in Cheltenham. The top 32 on the one season points list qualify for that. And he was, in the end, nowhere near. That is an amazing statistic, isn't it, really? Particularly when you consider that John Higgins still practices assiduously. I myself, I don't practice a great deal, but I'm, I, I should imagine I'm in a similar position, but, you know, I don't practice as much as John does. And John, a former four times world champion and won just about everything this game has to offer. That's a surprise. As is that. Hampered queuing, of course, but once more, a chance that normally he would bury has been wasted. This is the sort of match both of these players would have been looking forward to because playing each other ahead of the Masters, an ideal chance psychologically to give yourself a boost. Yes, and Higgins has got a tough opening assignment at Alexandra Palace. He plays on Monday evening against Jack Lazowski. Sort of a cannon on the brown there. Could have been a big help to Mark Selby. He'll need to be careful if he decides to run up behind the green here because I've seen evidence that this table... Well, he's taken on the brown? Surely not. No, because the reds weren't available. Yeah, I was going to say, if you roll up behind a bolt colour slowly, I've seen enough evidence that these table... Well, this table won anyway. isn't running 100% truly towards the bulk end. perfect contact. You might have noticed Mark Selby very sportingly said good shot and the reason he said that that's the kind of thing he would have done in the same situation. On the nose. Yes, it's an even better shot than I think Mark Selby thought it might be. He snooked on both remaining reds. You take into account the position of the colours. Mark Selby could have a problem here getting this safe. When it comes to snookers, Selby is the ultimate escape artist. But he couldn't find an escape route there. Third chance for Higgins to win the frame.
lowest value you colour the yellow, but the the best way to get onto the last red. Three. Level board, but of course at the table scoring, Higgins is now a big favourite. He's dropped nicely on the brown and, of course, getting back the brown on its own spot makes life a little easier. Eight. From here green, brown and blue in addition. Good. Should be a formality now for John Higgins, a very low scoring frame. Both players have had good chances. Looks as though John Higgins will prevail in the end. ball so no extravagant positional play well the frame started with a ridiculous fluke I thought it might end with one there at one point yeah that could be very important Back there, that John didn't make the double on the pink because that black is in a fabulous position to try and get the snooker that he needs. John Higgins will need to be very careful here because, to say, I can't think of anybody I'd least rather play in a situation like this. Yes, if Selby does work the oracle and get the snooker, and it's successful, six penalty points, plus pink and black in addition, would mean he would force a respotted black. But Selby does John Higgins' work for him. So there it is. It was a really scrappy, disjointed, one has to say low quality first frame. Mark Selby finding the funny side as he always does to a situation. Fact remains, if you play Mark Selby, you are grateful for one chance of frame. Higgins got three and in the end he got over the line. Sometimes it's best not to get yourself amused when you're playing snooker. It can shatter your concentration. Mark Selby fluked that red and then could not stop laughing, even when he was down <laughs> on the black. And that was the start of a poor frame for him. At least he had a moment of hilarity. Yeah, okay. 
second frame. Mark Selby. I think the, the serious Selby will re-emerge here. Two. He's lost the first frame, so he's under a little bit of pressure here in frame two. Doesn't want to pull two frames to nil behind. So somebody of John Higgins' capabilities. John may attempt this red to the right corner, can run through for the black. Mark Selby is quite a raconteur and in the players lounge he was telling some great stories about the former great of the game, sadly no longer with us, Willie Thorne. Yeah, there's a thousand stories about the great WT, let me tell you. And there's a story here on table two because Rob Milkins, with his highest break of the match, impeccably timed, is going to beat Ricky Walden by three frames to two. And bear in mind, earlier on today, Milkins beat Gary Wilson 3 2. He's handily positioned in the table. I'm afraid the same can't be said for Walden, though. He's lost to Judd Trump 3 0, Gary Wilson 3 2. And now to Milkins. Just too well there, Mark Selby. So in pot in the black, can't avoid cannoning into other balls. No guarantee of position here at all. Need a little bit of good fortune. And he's had plenty. Offers his hand in apology to John Higgins. Thanks. He was a little fortunate there. The group century tally is boosted. Nine. Rob Milkins made around 100 to win that decider against Ricky Walden. 3-2 the scoreline. And the last match of the day will be over on table two in around five minutes time. Matthew Selt against Judd Trump. Significantly overhit from Mark Selby. Not even sure that the red that he played for is potable now. Mark Selby, 13. Needs the yellow to come to his assistance. He did not expect that red, that rogue red, to track down the table and over the middle pocket. 
but the yellow isn't a blocker. about the path of the cue ball there Mark Selby he's not too badly positioned on the blue as long as he can avoid the bolt colours and he's played that quite nicely real chance Six. this for Mark Selby now The only red he could play for there was the red that's just below the pink into Four. the left centre and he's on it. But needs a better angle and a colour next time. 15. Doesn't want to be dead straight, and he is again, you know. Oh, he could have all kinds of difficulties now getting nice on his next red. Sometimes you've just got to Twenties. realize that position, extravagant position, isn't worth pursuing. So just following through and leaving a really tough red to middle. Well, it should have been a tough one. Terrific. out of position and is certainly on into the right corner but positionally can't guarantee position on a colour and it's not on a colour off the pink here I think and leave the cue ball somewhere near that yellow pocket just to hide the red that's over the corner well yeah. he's decided instead to play a safety off the black just doesn't want to risk giving John Higgins a shot at that red near the right corner this looks very awkward goodness me I don't think he'll have any idea how close his cue tip is to the cue ball here? I'm gonna have to guess a little. Well, that's a little bit of a negative shot to play, but it's safe, and that's the main thing. The branding iron extended spider on this Black table. A, a black shaft and it's extremely elevated ridiculously so in fact and I think under normal circumstances he might have used the branding iron there but this particular one he doesn't fancy and I can understand why
can tell you, over on table two, Judd Trump has just broken off against Matthew Selt in his last match of the day. If Trump wins that with four wins out of four, his place in the semi-final playoffs tomorrow night will be signed, sealed and delivered. John Higgins couldn't risk playing a safety shot into bulk there with the red that's near the left centre. Mark Selby has a straightish red into the left centre that he could attempt here, possibly. Although he's already turning it down. Trying to get the cue ball along this top cushion in behind the black if he can. I think the most important aspect of that shot was to get the cue ball tight to this cushion and he hasn't done it. John Higgins may attempt to red into the yellow pocket here. Well, beautiful. Even got the angle on the black and look at this table if you wanted the balls ideally placed for a counter attack this is it he's got one up in bulk Thanks. if he needs to go up there he's got one over the middle pocket everything's open all colours on their spots begging to be potted right. Absolutely, I will be surprised if Mark Selby returns to the table here in frame two. Difficult to see how John Higgins can fail here. This attempt to increase his lead, 2-0. 60. Over the years, he's produced so many clearances on the biggest of occasions. doing that you win more than just a single frame you strike an immense blow twenty four John Higgins, 24. He's not as reliable as he once was. Certainly, over the last 12 to 18 months. Well, I don't want to keep harping on about this, but for me, it just looks a little hunched up having that bridge hand so close to the cue ball. And it's causing him to just miss time some shots, in my opinion. Well, I think Selby's missed time that, hasn't he? Is the plink in the way? Seven. Well, I thought it'd be OK, but it's a lot closer than I thought it would be. You could be right, Phil. You may not be on the red. Eight. 
That's one of the hardest shots in snooker when you've made a positional blunder and you have to get down and get the concentration to bot a tough red next. And still Hello. fighting for perfect position here. The good thing is, he's 31 ahead, Don. Yes, exactly. Just needs red and high value colour to level this match up at one all. There's the red. It's quite nice on the black. I'm sure he'll play for the remaining red. Well enough on the black, I can't see him missing it. Nineteen on the frame. Mark saw. So John Higgins has seen enough. He had the chance to pinch that, but he missed a blue to the middle pocket, and Mark Selby, relieved to get a second opportunity, took it. So two frames played, they have been shared. He's changed it, I asked him. Oh, yes. It was on there. It is John Higgins one, Mark Selby one. On table one, here on table two, 65. Matthew Selt, who's been finding difficulty today, making an impact, has started off very nicely against Judd Trump. He's on a break of 65, the first scoring visit of the match, and he needs the blue as frame ball. After the blue goes in, then his concentration will turn to making another century. He's put together 12 centuries in the tournament so far. More than anyone else. Oh, but he missed the blue. Now will we see an action replay of Judd Trump's incredible clearance in the second frame? from 62 nil down to beat Mark Selby on the black with a 66 maybe not at this visit we'll let you know definite chance here for Mark Selby at the beginning of this third frame John Higgins's break off has left Shot to nothing on for Mark Selby into this left corner. Key ball should be going around the back of the black. I'm very surprised he prefers this straightish red instead. Don't see any problem in playing the other one to the left corner. I may have been very fortunate there. Selby can see the red that's next to the black but that's no good at all to him they just have to try and leave a cube in the pack of reds here on the right hand side of the table 
It is going to roll up to this red, but we'll need to be careful. It's okay. On table two, Matthew Salt is breathing a sigh of relief. When we left that, I can tell you Judd Trump impudently potted the red. Cushion first, landed on the black, knocked that in, but then he missed a, a tough red to a distant bulk pocket, and Matthew Selt, having broken down on 65 with a second chance, has taken it to lead Trump 1-0. Selby can pop the red that's near the right corner but can't possibly get on the colour from it. Couldn't risk playing the cue ball into bulk in case he left it for John Higgins. So again, just a containing safety. A chance of a possible plant to the right corner here for John Higgins. He knows the cue ball will be returning back towards the bulk area. Certainly worth a go this. Attempt at the pot there. 
playing purposely the red into others just to keep it down this end of the table and screw the cue ball back to bulk as he has done. Could have done with that cue ball travelling a little further towards a bulk cushion. John Higgins taking this straightish red on. Beautifully cued. Superb pop from John Higgins. trying to make the black and pink more accessible there by cannoning into the reds around it and it hasn't worked out badly crossing that red that means the black is available into the same pocket he played for it there John he's a little further away from the black than he wanted to be he's on the blue but just the wrong side of it so decisions to be made here Higgins has left for himself here. He's actually considering an attempt at another plant here, this time into the left corner. He's guaranteed to get close with this. It's not a difficult plant to get close to, but potting it isn't a guarantee. looks a little disconsolate but he does have brown to middle obviously it's another tester though Well, he keeps clearing potential hurdles, Dom, to remain at the table. 40. Yes, another superb pot from John Higgins. It's incredible, though, when you begin to run out of position, it's very difficult to yeah, sure. regain perfect position for your next ball. And in potting that terrific brown, he is on this red to the left corner, but Again, he's got to be very careful with the cue ball here. He may try and hold it for the black in the right centre. It's a fiddly little shot, this. Well, yes, okay. did the best that he could, but this black is awkward. Hampered queuing as well won't help matters. Fifteen. 
this already is reminiscent of the break that John Higgins made in the deciding frame 26. of the winners group final last season to beat Stuart Bingham had so many 23. crisis points in that break but he solved every problem and went on to lift the trophy This is the 13th meeting between Higgins and Selby in the Championship first. League over the years. 7-5 it is to Higgins head to head wise. They first played in 2009. Third two. Selby might remember that match. He made a 1-4-5. As for their head-to-heads in all other tournaments apart from the Championship League, well, Selby has 38. the superior record. He leads Higgins 12-9. 13-9. And they've both beaten each other in a World Championship final. I was very impressed by... One of Mark Selby's victories over John, which was one of the World Championship final matches because John Forty. Higgins had a significant lead. Mark Selby overcame that difficulty and went on to win and lift the trophy. 46. Yeah, it was 18-13 for Higgins in the Crucible Climax of 2007. A decade later, Selby came back to win 18-15. Difficult to recall what happened in that match in the early stages, but I seem to remember John Higgins having something like a 9-4 lead at one stage. John Higgins is going along very nicely here, though, in frame three. 53. Very near to the winning line now. Pretty good day, John Higgins, so far. 50. You were almost right. 60. Don. Higgins led. 10-4. But Selby ground him down. Sixty-one. Actually, I think that's a little bit unfair on Selby because in that match he made two centuries and twelve other breaks over fifty. John was bitterly disappointed to lose that match with the lead that he had. 68. Matt Selby. It was an incredible performance from him to recover that deficit against somebody like John Higgins, who did begin to falter a little, it has to be said. A long time ago now, a lot of water 69. under the bridge since then. Well, this one's in the books for Higgins. On a day of heavy scoring from many quarters, he's not really been at the party. 76. He made 64. That was his best in beating Matt Sell 3-1. 70 and 85 77. in beating Rob Milkins 3-2. 84. Eighty-five. 
can't quite beat the highest break of 138 already set by Gary Wilson over on table two in his match with Rob Milkins earlier on. 93. Still a chance of a 135 nevertheless. One hundred. One hundred and one. One hundred and six. One hundred and eight. On table two, Matt Selt, 2 0 up on Judd Trump. A break of 63 in the second frame. After his 65 in the first, order. basically the story was Trump was in early, took on a very difficult blue, knocked in a red, and Selt put the frame to bed. 150. So while Judd Trump's unbeaten record in the group is now under threat 120 the 100% record of John Higgins could be holding 126 on the frame doesn't John bother Higgins. with the black that was vintage Higgins will it be victorious Higgins well we'll find out as the story continues after the break John Higgins had made his fair share of mistakes in the first couple of frames, even though he won one of them. But in the third, the old the Higgins Mark's returned. That was good stuff. But Higgins is well aware that Selby's never out of the reckoning. We talked about that great comeback from Selby in the 2017 World Championship final. 10 4 down to Higgins, won 18 15. The 2018 China Championship, big money tournament over in the People's Republic. Higgins led 9 8 in the final. Selby won 10 9. on these two played it was a humdinger 6-4 to Selby in the quarterfinals of the champion of champions roughly two months ago Higgins made a 1-4-1 in that match Selby had a 140 and a 105 There isn't a red that pots into the left centre. That's 
That's 11 o'clock to the black. Look to me as though it would pop, but obviously it doesn't. But this red that's near the yellow will certainly pop, and John may take it on. problem in playing a safety shot here for John but he'll be mindful that he'll be bringing reds into play no guarantee he'll leave them all safe Didn't bargain on Cannon in the brown there, Mark Selby. John Higgins, I think, has a choice of both of these reds near the left corner. He'll do well to get on the colour from either of them. this and to dig down into the keyboard manage to find a gap between the black and the reds now just looking for one good positional shot onto a color here John Higgins Six. should give him the opportunity run out of Victor here The third frame over on table two was over in a flash. Judd Trump in almost immediately. Made 71, that was that. So Matt Selt's lead has been cut to 2-1. John Higgins' form steadily improving during the course of this match. A lot more error free now than he was when the match began. Yes, I don't think we've referred to him as the defending champion, but of course that's what he is. 
having won this title for the third time last year. In fact, he's won this tournament Thanks. three times since 2017. Captured the title that year, retained it the following year, and then came good last season. Twenty. Audible sigh from John Higgins. Try to screw the cue ball in behind the black to leave it on for the left corner, but cannoned it. Just didn't get hold of Yellow the cue ball, ball enough there. So that's end of break. Yeah, had he black ball. squeezed the cue ball around the black, it might well have been the beginning of the end. Of the match. John Higgins, 20. Get that brown and yellow to try and get the cue ball in behind. Most players love a target to aim for. John can play this leftmost red very thinly. He could certainly get that cue ball in behind the brown. John oh, Higgins, if he can't yeah, see yeah, left hand edge of the reds past the pink and the green. His right hand side of the table is rather congested. Very, very risky return to bolt from there. effort but can Marcel be cut that red into the right centre desperately thin I'm not sure he can see potting angle of it table from John Higgins. Once again a very potentially telling safety shot that Mark Selby's played. This time there certainly isn't a path through to the left hand edge of the Reds. So John has a big problem here. That red that's near the right centre will be very difficult not to leave on.
What? Well, he's not left it. He spotted it. Very handy flute plant. Just looking where the keyboard's finished, though. Another two inches is on the yellow. Two inches less, he can probably cut yellow the brown in. That's all he could do. Something Couldn't get the snooker really. Yeah, playing with the rest like that, it was always going to be highly unlikely that he had the the surgeon's touch for dead weight. Selby can play the red near the centre pocket and use the jaw of the centre pocket to bring the cable back towards Bolt. No, he tried to. The shot wasn't quite on. Now, is it safe? The raised hand from Mark Selby suggests that it is safe. Winning the third frame over on table two against Matt Selt. Judd Trump took his frames one today to ten. That means, regardless of what happens from here on in, he will top the table overnight. But of course, if he loses against Selt, Trump would stick on three points. And if Higgins were to win this, he would move to three points. And indeed, if Selby were to win this, he'd be on three points also. And the reason I'm saying that, Matt Selt in early in frame four, very promisingly positioned on a break of 45. Whoa. Oh no, not another fluke. <laughs> Dear me. Well, this time, okay, gain is not on a bulk colour, but this time he can snooker Mark Selby and he can put him in a world of pain. Wow, how did that wobble go in? It seemed Brown very ball. top jawish. There's the snooker, John Mark Higgins. Selby in big trouble. That's a fiendish one. Now we've said repeatedly over the the last three days, Dom, I have certainly that Mark Selby, when it comes to getting out of snookers and extricating himself from potential strife, is the best I've ever seen. But even for the maestro, surely this will be an escape that's beyond his powers. Well, he can come twice across the table and try and rest against the red that's just behind the black spot near the top cushion here. And that would be perfectly safe. And it's possibly the easiest shot that's available to him here. Yeah, easiest, but not easy. I should never write him off in any kind of situation, though. I don't think he'll be far away with this, you know. Foul. No, it wasn't. He was a mile away. John Higgins four. Got the jaw of the middle pocket. And the red that's next to the pink pots. I think John will be quite comfortable in playing it. Oh, 
Whoa. John Higgins has had a couple of very yes. handy flutes plants into this right corner. And second of them could be a frame and match winner for him. Looks like Matthew Selt is over the line on table two. 72. He's on a break of 72. 67 points left on the table. Matthew Selt, 72. Judd Trump needs a couple of snookers. Thank you. Nine. Goodness me, that keyboard nearly nestled up to that red. And it's this next positional shot. That's 60. the important one for John. We can leave the cue ball pretty parallel to the black. Should be fine, but does he have just too much angle on the red, I wonder? Yeah, I'm to play up for 17. the pink. 23 points the lead. With this pink, two more reds and colours. And the last match of the day here on table one by three frames to one. Matthew Silt has won on the other table by three frames to one over Judd Trump. Trump is still looking very good to make the playoffs. But his 100% record has been punctured. 24. As for Matt Silt, one win out of three. He comes back tomorrow for three more matches. And what a start he's had to this group. He couldn't have had a, a tougher assignment playing Higgins, Selby and Trump first up. So he's been involved from the start, Matt Selt, right from Group 1. Can he make it into the playoffs here? Can he make it into Group 5? We don't know. What we do know is that his stock has risen with that win. 32. Over the star of the show today, Judd Trump. So play could be coming to a rapid conclusion, Dom. Yes, just this black required by John Higgins. In it goes, snooker's required now by Mark Selby. I don't think, though, he'll be coming back to the table. 39. 40. He's played his best when it's most necessary. 46. Forty-seven. He started off shakily. 50. Yes, he won the first frame on the blue, but that was with his third chance. 55. Second frame, he had a wonderful opportunity to clear. 
Mr. Blue. At that point, I thought that Selby was possibly the favourite. But then Higgins made 120 in vintage fashion. 62. In the third frame. And he's kept Selby in his chair in 63. this one. Super shot that was from John Seven. Higgins. Unfortunately, not quite enough on for the century. That was one of the best positional shots we've seen to date. 72. John Higgins, 72, the frame and the match. He's won three matches out of three today, up. John Higgins. But that was, for me, the pick of his performances. A 3-1 victory over Mark Selby, who has played four matches today, won two, lost two. So his fate in terms of this group still hanging in the balance.